Welcome back to the Exotical Dollhouse. I am the doll. And today's episode is about rebranding the black feminine image. And of course, this work starts within. There are stereotypes about black women that we all know we've heard about that are negative. But there are also positive stereotypes about black femininity that work for us. And leaning into them will help us to highlight our best attributes. It's like rewriting our resume. Um, this will absolutely help bridge the gap between us and the world so that our brand is improved and it will make us more multicultural. Mm. It will help to add value to black femininity, rebranding. Because, you know, right now our brand is like, it goes from left to right, from either a twerking rap coochie popping queen to a hard nosed political activist. There, or, or, you know, it's it, there's no real in between, except, you know, our movie stars, maybe it's a few singers that are a little softer. But in our day to day, we can really rebrand moving away from politics and from degeneracy and, and coming into our own. Of course, if you aren't already aware, um, this channel is here to offer ideas that may help the racial divide in America. The point is to have open dialogue. And we, I'm not even gonna call it the racial divide anymore because they're really, that really isn't the truth. But I wanna help facilitate the melting pot of it all and I want to help to really shape the culture in a positive direction. And so the point is to have an open dialogue and I, you know, I may not agree with your opinion. However, um, I am open to hearing it. I believe that your right to speak and have ideas is protected and that's what makes our country so great. So please offer your criticisms in the comments section. Um, and my content is developed from my perspective, my perspective as an American woman who is racially mixed with over 27% admixture. And I only say that because I was inspired by a channel that exists on YouTube uh, called Exoticals United, and that kind of inspired the name. I have a unique perspective because as an MLS woman, I have enjoyed a multicultural experience while living in America. And I hope that it adds to a greater conversation about how to preserve our very privileged way of life. So how can we, in the exotical dollhouse, all of the dolls, use the black stereotypes that work for us? First, let's identify some of the stereotypes or truths or um, traits that work for us. One of them, even though we may not understand it, is our existence as uh, enslaved people in America. Not slaves, we are, we're women in captivity. So um, we, are, we, uh, we offer a, that obedience and subservience that we try to rebel against, but it served our survival. So we know how to adapt. We did that so that we could ease our way into the position we're in today. So I, I do think we should lean into remembering our heritage. The heritage of slavery, that Southern heritage, honey. No matter where you live in the United States, if you were a descendant of American slavery, the likelihood is, is that you have roots in the South. So um, our heritage in, in, in discussing our lineage 
especially those of us with English and Irish and European admixture from the multi-generationally mixed people in our histories, in our families who were very likely uh, mixed with slave masters. So we are, have not only been enslaved, but we have been the masters of enslaved people. We have that in our lineages. And no matter how others try to one drop us out of American, uh, the American society or civilization, that that's actually past. No one can make me less American than I actually am. I don't care what kind of rights they strip me of. I know my roots here go are very deep. So I claim this land and the system of America. Um, I am happy to continually be learning how it works so that I can work the system. And as a constituent of uh, American uh, public figures, I want to be represented by American women who embrace their heritage and our, you know, ingenuity in helping to make the country what it is. During the days when cotton was king, we had an instrumental role in putting America in the forefront of the world with our with our productivity. And the one thing about cotton is it's soft. It's something that we have a very personal relationship with and we should celebrate it. We should actually take back cotton. Black women should take back cotton. I never understood the feeling of repulsion that people had towards something connected to their history that told a story of how their ancestors worked and lived. You know, we can't run from the facts of the history of America. We should embrace it and embrace the nature and softness of cotton and the fact that a lot of us have any soft, cottony, black hair you know, three B and below, it's very like a cotton cloud. So rebrand yourself as a cotton, you know, cotton queen. A lot of, I have caught myself at one point being envious of Latina women because it, they have a very wonderful culture that everyone enjoys the spicy Latina, right? But everyone also enjoys the saucy, savory, sassy black woman. You know, everybody, it's just true. Everybody loved Florence on the Jefferson. Hi! Would y'all like to celebrate your big business deal with a bottle of champagne? There's one open in the kitchen. Florence, I fired you! I know. That's what I'm celebrating. <laughs> Good decision making. Uh, respect for ourselves and high levels of rationality. That coupled with a bit of spark and sass, that got uh, Hattie McDaniel her first Oscar as an enslaved woman in Gone with the Wind. And and I love I love her in Gone with the Wind. She was so sassy, but everybody respected her from the top to the bottom. And whatever she said had carried weight. Ooh. Just hold on and suck in. Mommy, here's the scarlet pickles. You can dig it all back to the kitchen. I won't need to buy it. Oh, yes, and you is. You was going to eat every mouthful of this. Oh, I know. You put on the dress, because we're late already. What will I'm going to wear? That. No, you ain't. You can't show your bosom for three o'clock. I'm going to speak to your mom about you. If you say one word, Mother, I won't eat a bite. Well. Keep the 
show off and show off. I aim for you to get all freckled. Have the buttermilk out and put on your list when reaching in my circles. <laughs> Oh, now, Miss Scarlet, you come on and be good and eat just a little, No. Honey. I'm going to have a good time today and do my eating at the barbecue. If you don't care what folks says about this family, I do. I have told you and told you that you can always tell a lady but the way that she eats in front of folks like a bird. And I ain't aiming for you to go to Mr. John Wilkinson's and eat like a field hand and gobble like a hog. Fiddle dee dee. Ashley Wilkes told me he likes to see a girl with a healthy appetite. What gentlemen says and what they think is two different things. And I ain't noticed Mr. Ashley Axon for to marry you. I don't eat too fast. Ain't no need to have it come right back up again. Why does the girl have to be so silly to catch her husband? We have to learn from those who came before us. We are standing on the shoulders of women who were giants, and we think we're tall. We haven't gotten there yet. We have to pay reverence to the ones who came before us. So we should uh, ex uh, remember that we are the descendants of women who cared for cotton and cared for families um, all over the South. And we are the great American mothers, the great American aunties. You know, we can associate ourselves with the fertility of the land and um, really growing the land and being in touch with the land of America, especially the American South. I am originally a Northern girl, but I've been really blessed to live in the South for more than half of my life. And, you know, just knowing history and the great migration, um, we can really say that we are in touch with the land, the, la the American land the red dirt of Alabama, the very deep, deep, rich, the very, very most fertile land in this great uh, country. So we should own that. Another way that we can rebrand ourselves is by focusing on our rhythmic nature. The American music has infiltrated the world and there are no bigger stars than our black superstars. They set the trends and continue to do so. So we're very rhythmic women of the American soil. We have to rebrand ourselves based on the pride that we have uh, and our rhythmic nature. Not negging other people for being offbeat or um, talking down about other styles of dance and movement and rhythms, but really celebrating theirs while being ambassadors of our own, teaching others and letting them mimic us. They can't do what we do. It just is what it is. The Iggy Azaleas of the world cannot do what we do. And we should welcome her to embrace our style. You know, we should really understand our rhythmic nature and um, embrace that stereotype. Another thing that can be done to really help rebrand is to remember our betters. Like I've mentioned Hattie McDaniel, but then there's that Coretta energy. Coretta Scott King and uh, others like her have really been gaining more visibility because a recent, um, uh, star, what's his name? This guy that's in the news um, for abuse, he started dating Megan Good. Megan Good's boyfriend. You know, Coretta Scott King has been highlighted lately because Megan Good's boyfriend kind of told his previous girlfriend that he wanted her to be more like Coretta Scott King. He was telling a white girl this. 
but nobody can Coretta like a Coretta. And Coretta is such a, an African-American name that we can really lean into her, her likeness and her energy. You know, um, just exclaiming ourselves as, you know, sassy, sexy Coretta energy. And if that's what you want to be, or the, the, the savvy Coretta, it will soften any one of us. And that softness is how we get what we want. Control of emotion is, is natural femininity. Controlling it is the highest level of femininity. You know, two-year-old girls are the ones who can't control their energy. So even leaning into Ebony, Jet Beauties of the Week, you know, um, so, like others might call themselves, you know, a, a blonde bombshell. We could call ourselves the, the jets, Jet Beauties of the Week, jet of Jet Beauty, you know, Ebony, Ebony Centerfolds. Uh, uh, you know, we have our savvy, sassy flavor. We have flavor. And that is really something that we can lean into. Our brands that have highlighted black excellence and resilience that the world knows and can remember and that is unique to us because our brand and our culture is America's greatest export, especially its beautiful black pearls, okay? The sweet mothers and, you know, nurturers of the land, the, the goddesses of the soil, of American soil, the cotton goddesses. So, this is just me practicing these phrases, but you get the idea. Let me know what you think. You know, you know we can continue to, to go by. One thing that the sassy, savvy, rhythmic woman can do is really clean up the language. Not to say that everyone has to speak properly, but just, Omitting curse words, omitting really personal concepts and curse words and discussions of polarizing topics like religion, money, um, sex, omitting that from conversation and just being oneself, no matter how country or, 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 or if a, one of us is using African-American vernacular, you can do that and still be embraced by popular culture. And there's nothing wrong with being embraced by popular culture. We could call someone like Shekinah, Shekinah Joe from Love and Hip Hop and uh, the, the Family Hustle. We could call her Ratchet, but she's so lovable, no matter how country and broken her English is. So, you know, she you can be from the, the ghetto and still rebrand yourself like a cotton goddess. Someone like like her, she was sassy. I, you know, I thought she was hilarious. Uh -huh. There's nothing wrong with being vulnerable and imperfect. That is something that can also improve and that we can highlight and move into a state of vulnerability. And, you know, if someone is trying to get to know you, being very open and the opposite of perfect, imperfect, showing imperfections. Showing imperfections is a way to endear people to you. So uh, that's one thing that we can do is understand our imperfections and be okay with not being as polished, perhaps, as someone who was from a Mayflower family that, 
you know, it, it was born into wealth and whose generations before her were, were born into wealth. Like we, might, we, we can be refined and also be fallible at the same time. Um, one of the 48 laws of power, law number 46 is never appear to be too perfect. Never appear too perfect. No, don't be too perfect. So we have lots of vulnerabilities. And another one, the art of seduction, the 13th rule, disarm your target through strategic weakness and vulnerability. You wanna seduce, you wanna like win people over. Being vulnerable is the way to go. Being some, like, like the Shekinah, just show, fine with showing flaws. Oh, it's fantastic. And even someone like, for, for example, Sexy Red. She is unapologetically degenerate. It makes her vulnerable and it does make her likable. You know, trying to be so perfect is really off-putting. And it makes you hard to the world. And it makes it hard to other people to connect with you from a heart source area. So it's okay to be vulnerable, uh, Ebony Goddesses. Um, another thing that, you know, we can rest in knowing is that that black sassiness, that MLS sassiness is, is very lovable. And it's been embraced. For example, you know, one of my favorite shows is Drag Race, RuPaul's Drag Race. And the queens of all races seem to give off that sassiness that is natural to black women. It's like they all had a black woman babysitter and she had this flavor and that's how they learned drag, you know. Um, for example, one of my favorite queens, Alyssa Edwards. Just, just watch. My name is Alyssa Edwards, and I am 32 years of age. I'm known as the Vanessa Williams of drag. Trust the Duchess when she says this. Y'all thought y'all had packed me? It ain't over just yet, baby. I don't mind all the theatrics, but if you're gonna be loud and rowdy rowdy and think you're a bowdy bowdy bitch, stand up and be one. Look at don't be weak sauce. Are you excited for this? I do love a good ball. You do. You've been known to have a couple in your mouth. <laughs> I'm a good Christian woman, honey. I have nothing to say to that. Of course you do. Because you picked the right time to flaunt your foolishness in front of all of my friends, fans, family, and folks at home. The absolute nerve. I'm a teacher and a mentor. <laughs> so don't shy away from that sassy energy. Even though Coretta was not a sassy type of person. Claire Huxtable was. You can give Claire Huxtable energy and read a, read a person down without batting an eye or breaking a sweat, saying a cuss word. I felt things were getting out of control and I wanted to put a stop to it. Ian is right, we have to have order. Yeah. She was disrupting the flow. I was trying to become part of the conversation. Oh, there she goes again! Break this team, I don't think this new panel is working out. <laughs> Ian, you know the station management is concerned about her low ratings. We're trying to broaden her viewership. Uh, fine, then let her speak. Let me get to the black topics. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Black topics. Is that what I'm here to do? Talk about the black topics? Mm -hmm. No, you're also here to speak for women. Oh, that's nice. I am a woman who is black, but I'm also a human being who is an attorney, a mother of five, and somewhat knowledgeable about history, which is why I thought I was invited here. But when you look at me, this is all you see in me, a black woman? Oh, no, absolutely oh, no, not. No, 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 we no, have to get back to the show. Oh, yeah. Are you calm enough to continue? I guess. I'll give it the old college try. Quiet, <laughs> right, please. In five, four, three, two. Well, we're back, Mrs. Huxtable. I'm afraid we only have 30 seconds left. In that time, could you please tell us what effect the Depression had on the Blacks? Mm. Mm. Well, let's sum that up in 30 seconds. Well, it's close to 20 seconds now. How did the Depression affect Blacks? 
Well, we learned that misery does not love company. Mm. That's today's edition of Breakfast Back. I'm Ian Forget. Join us again next week. <laughs> you she could handle herself. Your wife, I'm <laughs> Now, how long will it be for her to come down here? No, that would take off her makeup. Senora, it's too maravillosa. Ah, muchas gracias. De nada. Honey, I don't want to deal with makeup. I just want to get out of here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello. One second. Senora, para usted. Ah, okay. Thank you. Hello. Really? Let me think about that a minute. Mm. It's the producer's darling. They said it's the best show they've ever had. They want me to stay. Really? Well, it's up to you, dear. I thought about it. The answer's no. Thank you. Getting up at 4.30 in the morning to prove who I am to three men who are basking in the non-existent reins of their own intelligence is not my idea of a fun time. Mm-hmm. 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 That is not a donut. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to devolve into fighting. That's what the young women need to know. Be sundress Coretta. Be sundress Claire. You know, the jet beauty. Give that jet beauty of the week energy. Um the savvy jet beauty. You know, we, we made friends with the spicy Latinas. You know, I'm a cotton cutie. That we have to really be the Coretta cuties. Something that really gives us like a good solid rebrand. And really leave all the other stuff behind. Some of those stereotypes that work against us would be, you know, women of a certain hue that are black or mixed and not uh not white passing or not um latina passing or not you know asian passing this we fall into stereotypes like being overweight being loud and obnoxious not good listeners impatient degenerate sexual anarchist, just totally irresponsible, no rules, sexual rules. Um, we don't have to do that. And that's not who we are. That's not who most of us are. So we have to spread the word about the new, the, the rebrand for us, you know, um, the cotton queens, the earth mothers of America. The, the just 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 dive into it share your thoughts and like the video because it helps other people to find this channel and i really want to keep it going bye y'all